This video will give you insight into how Mrs. Landon plans to teach her proficiency-based, personalized learning by learning objective in FST this year. The classroom here is set up in such a way to help facilitate a successful learning environment. Students will have the option to participate in daily direct instruction, where the classroom is still set up with rows in front of the board for a general lecture. The classroom also has group areas. There are some high top tables with bar stools, some general dining tables, and some places with just tables of two or three. These areas would be helpful if you're going to take your own notes on your own through the videos, or if you're just trying to catch up or work on your coursework with other peers. There's also going to be comfy spots where a single student could sit and lounge out here, or a few students could share a bean bag, or students could sit on the floor and use this location to read, take notes, and work on their assignments. The tools that students will be using are found on Schoology. Schoology is organized in a very sequential order for them in terms of how to approach the class. They're going to first start by analyzing their learning style and then looking at the resources available to them for the course, and then they will dive into the actual coursework. Students will analyze their learning style by first taking a 20 question survey in which they will learn if they are an auditory learner, a visual learner, or a tactile learner. By knowing what type of learning style a student has will better help them prepare for how to take notes and partake in being successful in the course. There's also a reference here for some study tips. There are three individual PDF documents with some excellent study tips based on the type of learning style each student has. The curriculum they will cover is set up the same way for all of the eight chapters that will be covered within the course. The first is chapter one. In every chapter when you go in here, you can click on the resources folder. In there they can find the blank template of the entire chapter notes and the homework assignment in case they can't find their packet. They will also have a copy of the proficiency tracker and extra practice problems, which are also embedded in the hard copy of their notes that they're given for every chapter. The students will first start by taking a pre-quiz based on a various number of sections, in this case the first three sections. This quiz is set up for them to be able to assess what they already know broken down by learning objective. The intention is if they already know a learning objective, they do not have to go ahead and take notes on it and do the homework associated with it. This is an example of a pre-quiz. It's broken down by learning objective code and then the definition of the objective itself with a problem the students will try. They will then turn their quiz in to get corrected. If a learning objective uh, proficiency level is met, the student will get a check mark on that. However, if they miss the problem or are not considered proficient, then they will not. They will then want to go to their proficiency tracker and record all of the learning objectives which they got check marks. The proficiency tracker is going to be the very first page in every note packet they get for every chapter and it's going to be a document they'll want to keep track of throughout the entire chapter. For the first pre-quiz they took on here was the first three sections, which included 10 learning objectives. On the pre-quiz, if they got the learning objective correct, they would want to come on here and give themselves a check. So let's assume the student got those three right. The intention of this document is to help them make a plan on how they are going to learn about the other learning objectives they did not get correct in the pre-quiz. Now the choices they have is they can watch a video that's made, they can read the textbook that's available, or they can wait for direct instruction. I encourage them to in here before we start to actually write down how they think they want to go about learning the learning objectives they didn't know. So a student might choose for these other seven learning objectives to watch a video for the next two, for the other three, they might read the book and take their own notes, and for the last two, they might choose to take direct instruction and wait for the class lecture. This is not set in stone and can be changed at any time. It's just a way to help students plan how they want to learn. Students are now ready to start their own personalized learning. So after they receive their pre-quiz back, they'll see which learning objectives they were proficient on and those in which they were not proficient on. If they did not receive a check mark, they were not proficient, Therefore, they're going to want to take some notes and do the homework associated with it. Now, if they did get a check mark on an objective in the pre-quiz, they were proficient on it. Therefore, they do not have to take notes and do the homework with it. Let's say there was an objective in section 1.1 where there was no check mark, therefore not proficient. Click on this folder. 
When they click into this section, what you're going to see is some variety of documents. You're going to have the book notes and some extra practice problems that are recommended, video notes, and then this is going to be the homework, which we call a quiz, but it's your daily homework by learning objective. And then it'll repeat itself for the other learning objectives out there. And then it follows up with the solutions for the extra practice problems that are listed up here. If a student chooses to take notes by the book, they would click this PDF document. This document will bring them to an actual copy of the physical book notes, but in PDF format. They'll want to get their note packets out, read the text that they need, and complete their packet notes accordingly for the learning objectives they didn't know. Now maybe they chose they'd rather take video notes by learning objective. If they click on that appropriate link, it will bring them into YouTube. This one right here was learning objective 1.1a, and you can tell right now that this is a 4 minute, 51 second video. They'd want to watch this video and take the notes and complete their packet. Now the third choice is they can just wait for class lecture in which I will go through the notes in their packet and they can complete them then. Once they're done with their notes by either doing the book, the video, or lecture, they're then going to go into the homework. This homework is actually embedded in their hard copy note packet and it's also online right here. Now they can choose to go to the hard copy note packet and do the homework on paper, which I do recommend. When they are ready to see if they're correct, they're going to go into the green puzzle piece or their homework and they would submit their answers. For example, this question in front of us is a matching problem, so they can just go ahead and do the matching. When they submit their answers, it'll come back with either a green box or a red box. The green box is correct, the red is incorrect. Now what students are striving for is to have a proficiency level of at least 70%. If on that first homework assignment they get 70%, the system will allow them to move on to the next one. If they are not content with their score because they can achieve 100%, they have up to three times to resubmit their homework online before the system locks them out. So they can make a choice if they're not happy with their initial homework points. Now if they don't hit the proficiency level in their three tries, this is when they'll want to seek out me as the teacher or ask a peer or dig through some of the notes again to figure out what they're doing wrong. Once that's done, I will unlock the homework assignment and they can try it again. But before I unlock it, they must go through at least one step of intervention. After students have finished all of the sections related to the pre-quiz, then they're ready to take the formal quiz. The formal quiz looks very much like the pre-quiz, except the questions have been slightly changed. You're going to see the learning objective number, the actual word, and a slightly different question related to it. Similar to the pre-quizzes, the formal quiz will be corrected with a check mark. So if a student gets the learning objective correct, I will mark it off. They will then want to take their results from this quiz and go back to their proficiency tracker and record how they did. So now on the proficiency tracker, we're in the formal quiz. They will want to go and mark off the learning objectives that they got correct this time. Now, let's say that of these 10 learning objectives, 8 of them they got correct on the quiz. Now, a score will go in the gradebook for this quiz. If they are not content with that score, then they have the chance to retake it. However, they must take a step of intervention. Because these two learning objectives were not achieved, they have to come up with an adjustment to their plan. If there's a learning objective where they got it in the pre-quiz so they never took notes but they missed it on the actual formal quiz, what I would recommend as an adjustment to their plan is to actually go in this time and take some notes for it. If that doesn't help, what they can do is reference the extra practice problems that are listed in here for them to try. So for example, this other learning objective they didn't get it in the pre-quiz, but they did take their notes and did the homework. They missed it in the formal quiz. So they already took the notes, so this time they should go directly to the extra practice problems and try those. The extra practice problems are found in their corresponding sections. So if you missed a problem in section 1.1 on the formal quiz, you can find the extra practice embedded in the book notes. Click on the PDF and just scroll down to the end of the notes. You'll find the section questions. Now, on the proficiency tracker, I listed the questions that you should try. Students should try the appropriate questions. When they want to check their answers, you click on the, ex the solutions uh, document down here, and it will show them the answers. If they still don't have the answers correct, 
I highly recommend they seek me out to get some extra help or again, ask a peer. Once they've gone through the extra practice on the missed learning objectives, they can retake the formal quiz just for the learning objectives that they missed. If they achieve them now, then their score will be improved. After they've retaken their quiz, they want to come back to the tracker again. Look at, on this case, just the two objectives they retook. If they got them correct this time, check off that they were accomplished. The intention of this document is, is to give students a complete reflection of how they learn the material from the start of the pre-quiz to the very end to the formal quiz and retake. Once this is done, they're going to move on to the next few sections in the book. In this case, the next few sections would be sections 1.4 to 1.6. What students would then do is repeat the exact same process. They would take the pre-quiz, analyze their results, and then take the necessary notes and do the homework as needed to get ready to take their formal quiz. After all the pre-quizzes and formal quizzes are done, students will get ready and prepare for the chapter test. If you go into the review folder, you will find a review worksheet broken down by learning objective. I highly recommend students try to do this worksheet on their own and without their notes. If they get stuck, then I would reach for the notes to try to get some help or ask a peer for some help. When they're ready to check their answers, there's a variety of ways. They can open up this PDF document which shows the answer solutions. Or they can watch a video that was made and it goes through every single question on the review document. They may also seek out help from me or they can wait for when we talk about the review questions in class and we can address their issues as an entire class. On the day of the test, students will want to bring their note packets and put their name on it. They will turn their note packets into me and I will grade their notes on completion based on the learning objectives they should have taken their notes on and a grade will go into the grade book. While I'm doing that, they will take their chapter test. Once the original test is closed and everyone has taken it, students will have an option to retake the test if they are not content with their results. To do a retake, there are a few things. I highly recommend they make an appointment with me to go over their original test and get their questions answered. In addition to that, they may also want to watch a video of me going over their test. Right now it's hidden, but after the test is closed, I will unlock this and students can get a step-by-step -step of me walking through every question on the test. Now, for the retake, it must be done during school hours and within two weeks of the original test. So students need to plan accordingly and make sure they get the retake done within the appropriate window. This course will also have one project each quarter and the information will also be found in Schoology. So there'll be a project assignment and all of the resources they need will be within the folder. Many of the projects give students the option on how they want to do their project, either individually or with a partner and sometimes in a group of three. So students should really think about what is the best way for them to approach doing this project to be the most successful. Overall, this is proficiency-based, personalized learning by learning objective in FST. I hope this overview was helpful. Feel free to contact me with any questions.